Rev up your engines! I'm always being asked by my customers and by you viewers, Scotty, should I buy a used car from a car rental agency? And my answer is generally, no. I would not buy a used car from a car rental agency. And my first reason for not wanting to buy a car that came from a car rental company has to do with me and other people who rent cars all the time. When I travel distances, I don't have time to drive. I fly in a plane, then I rent a car. And when I rent cars, generally, I beat the heck out of them. I'm in a hurry. I don't care what kind of roads I go on. I really don't care where I park the car. They're not taken care of by the drivers all that much. Rental cars often take large beatings over a couple of years. Hundreds of people probably rent each individual car. Who knows how they drive, how they took care of it, if they hit curbs, if they backed up into stuff. And here's a big thing that a lot of people might not understand, but they're gonna find out now. Most major car rental places, they're self-insured. They're not insuring them through a company. They insure themselves. They're so big, they save money that way. But it can be a bad thing if you're buying a used one from them. If you're self-insured, hey, they handle it all in-house. What happens is, if it's been in a wreck, you may never find out. Do a Carfax, if it didn't go through an insurance company, Carfax isn't gonna have any information on, oh gee, it was wrecked and then they fixed it. They do that all in-house. I had a customer, bought a Mazda from one of these car rental places. About a year later, he got in a little wreck and his body man said, hey, look at this. This car's been in a big wreck before because it's got an aftermarket bumper on it. It's not the Mazda bumper. Well, he was never told that the car had been in a wreck, but unfortunately for the car rental company, my customer was a lawyer. He was gonna sue him and he said, what do you want? And he says, well, you know, I want the money back I paid for the car and I'm gonna keep the car. And so that's what they gave him. So basically he got a free car, but still that was a car that had been in a wreck. And if you take a big company like say Hertz, Last I checked, they had over 400,000 cars that they had that they were renting out in the United States. That's a lot of cars and a lot of stuff can fall under the cracks. I wouldn't advise anybody to buy one of those cars myself. And that actually brings me to another reason not to buy a car from them. They're priced way too high. They're all done by their bookkeepers to say, well, we depreciated this much of this. And if they say want $22,500 for the car, that's what they're gonna ask. And they won't accept anything less. They're selling cars and they said, these cars go for this kind of money. We don't take anything less. And as I've said in a previous video, the book value of cars is artificially inflated in the United States. The companies that make these book ratings of what cars are worth are now owned by companies that sell used cars. So it's a very corrupt system. Take England. In England, used cars are much cheaper than the United States because they don't have such a corrupt system as they do here in the United States. To give you an analogy, go to a jeweler. Show them a diamond ring, get it appraised. And then say, okay, what will you give me for that? Well, they're gonna give you tons less because they wanna sell it and make a bunch of money. So it's to their advantage that the sales price for them is really high, even though the actual value it's much lower. And with these car rental companies, like I said, they say one low price, you know, what a bunch of nonsense, the money that they want to get. And if you don't want it, hey, they won't sell it to you. Because in reality, used cars are used. Anything that's used, as far as I'm concerned, has whatever value anybody will pay for it. There is no actual value set in stone. And considering that you'd be buying a used car that had been driven by hundreds of different people, and the price is really high, that's not fair. If you buy a car from a one owner car, you know he took care of it. He's thinking, well, I'm gonna keep it for a while, I'm gonna sell it, so I'm gonna take good care of it, fine. But if you're buying a car that's been driven by hundreds of different people at a really high price, it's just not a smart thing to do. The rental car companies get a big deal. I mean, look at Hertz. If they own over 400,000 cars that they're renting out, they're gonna cut a pretty tight deal on what they're gonna pay for these cars. So my friend who worked at the Chevy factory said, hey, we all knew the next 5,000 were going to rental cars, so we didn't have to be that great on the fit and the finish because it wasn't being bought by a private individual who might look at the car, examine it, make sure everything's okay. It's being sold in a fleet to a rental car company. Let's face it, 
you know, when you rent a car, when you bring it back, there's usually a very cursory check of the car when you bring it back. Especially guys like me, if I fly out early in the morning and it's five o'clock in the morning and you drive it in, guy just kind of looks around a car and checks the mileage and sees it's full of gas and that's it. And personally, I have to vouch on this. They seem to be cheaper made, the ones that are sent to the rental car companies because I rented a car once in Wisconsin. Well, I got in the car and closed the door on the inside one time and a couple of screws fell out on my lap from the dash when I closed the door. I guess they weren't so prideful in Indiana when they made that rental car. <laughs> <laughs> if these rental car companies are cutting the best deal that they can, but the company's making them thinking, well, they really cut us down. We're not making much profit, so let's whip these things out as fast as we can. Heck, over the decades I've been renting cars, I had cars where the dashes weren't even glued in right. They were crooked. A lot of them had much more rattles than normal cars that my customers had in them even though they were low mileage when I was renting them. And if you're looking at buying a used one, say of a model that's notorious for having transmission problems, people who are renting them, you're driving the heck out of them. They don't care that the transmission's weak. It's not their car. A private individual owns one. Odds are they're gonna take better care. They're not gonna drive it as fast, taking chances with the transmission by over revving it and stuff. But when it's a rental car, hey, that stuff happens all the time. So if you got a relatively weak transmission to begin with, and you're buying a rental car with that, Hey, I've had many customers have that happen, and the transmissions went out within a couple of years of them buying the vehicle. And of course, another reason I say not to buy them is the maintenance factor. Guys who are mechanics for the car rental companies, they don't get paid like regular mechanics do at a dealership. As an example, last I checked, they were paying about $33,000 a year for the mechanics at Hertz, while the Ford mechanics, they're getting paid on average about $47,000 a year. So not only are the mechanics at the rental car places being paid less, they have to work on all the different kinds of cars that the company buys. Where, say a guy's working at a Ford dealership, he's only working on Fords, he has all the specialized equipment at the Ford garage, and of course he's gonna do a better job. He's getting paid more, he has better equipment, and people can tout all they want. Oh, we have service records for it. It's paperwork, it means nothing. I've been in many rental cars where the maintenance lights were on, when I checked the oil, the oil was low because they hadn't changed it regularly enough. Hey, paperwork doesn't mean anything. Anybody can fill out paperwork. What's actually done, that could be another story entirely. But, let's say you're in a pinch and you gotta get a car fast. Well, let's face it, they got a lot of late model cars. And yes, you're gonna overpay. They charge too much for them. But let's say, you're looking at a Toyota Corolla. You're looking at a really bulletproof car. I've got customers with them. They have two, 300,000 miles, and basically all they ever did in the cars was change the oil and filter and the brake pads when they wore out, and they're still running strong. So they can take a lot of abuse before they fall apart. So if you're hard pressed to find a decent car, maybe get a Toyota Corolla from one of these. But please, don't go buy a Chrysler from one of these things. They're bad enough new, and you buy one that's been driven by hundreds of people. Who had a customer do that once with a Sebring, and that car just fell apart in the first year that he owned it. And if you are going to buy a used car from a rental car company, you pay a guy like me, a professional mechanic, to check it out before you buy. Because as I say, as they're self-insured, it might have been in a wreck, you're never gonna be able to find out. But a good mechanic, hey, we can find that stuff out. When I'm checking out a used car, first thing I do is go all around with a flashlight and look for mismatched paint where I can see, hey, this black part's got a little white on it and it's a white car. Obviously, it's been wrecked and repainted. We can find that stuff pretty fast. And of course, don't listen to anything the salesman says. I've done that for customers and showed them that, look, this car was obviously in a wreck and they go back and they say, oh, your mechanic's crazy. Oh, look, the paperwork shows it's never been in a wreck. Well, like I said, paperwork, anybody can make up paperwork. Actually, obviously, that the car's been in a wreck, you don't buy it. And you can't trust anybody these days, so you have a mechanic check it out before you buy. You can tell paint imperfections, and if you see, gee, this fender's a little different color than the hood, you'll know it's been wrecked. Then you walk away from that car right away and start looking at the other ones. A lot of times right before they sell them, they do all the cosmetic stuff, so let's say you're looking to buy one, use your nose too. Because if you smell fresh paint all over the place, you know, they've touched it all up and they painted it all over just to sell it to you. 
And then you might find a year later all that paint starts to fade off because they didn't do such a hot job. Again, there's a great deal of difference between a private individual that's selling their own car that they knew if I take care of it, I'll get decent money when I sell it, versus a corporation that has hundreds of thousands of cars that when they sell them, they just want to get them to look as shiny as possible on the outside and unload them as fast as they can because they have hundreds of thousands of them that they have to get rid of. My advice is stay away from buying a used car from a rental car lot. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.